Hi, welcome to Special Olympics Rana Magazine. My name is Megan Miller, and joining me today are some of our 2018 Super Plungers. Chief Elwood Johnson from Richmond Police Department, Officer Tammy David from East Providence Police Department, and Rick Labriche, retired from Woonsocket Fire Department. Welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Elwood, can you tell me about Plunge Weekend and when they will and where and when they all are taking place? Sure. So this year it's on March 24th and 25th. It's a Saturday, Sunday. We start with uh, the high school unified plunge at noon on Saturday, and then the super plungers begin their trek of 24 consecutive plunges over 24 hours overnight, which I don't like, into the next day on Sunday. And then we take our last plunge at noon, and we're followed by the entire torture and plunge group. And um, how are you all involved with Special Olympics? I've been involved for, I'm not sure how many years, but uh, my son is a Special Olympic athlete, and I've been doing all the torch run events and the torch run itself probably for 13 or 14 years. I think I've been involved with Special Olympics for about 10 years now. Um, I'm the head coach of the Rhodey Rangers. I have a daughter who's an athlete. I have a niece who's an athlete. And I've been involved with the torch run since my brother Ron retired from the police department about six years ago, I took over as the liaison for the Woonsocket leg. I've been presenting medals and volunteering since uh, 1989. And what happens with a lot of us who volunteer for that first time, you, you see what's going on and you meet the athletes and you meet the families and you get hooked and it becomes an extended part of your family. So yeah. it grows every year because it's such a good thing, uh, the programs and the people involved with it. And not only are we part of your families, but you guys are part of our families, too, you know? That's what Special Olympics is. We're family, so it's really, really awesome. Mm. Rick, I understand this is going to be our fourth Super Plunge. What motivates you to plunge each year? That's a real easy answer. You do. Our captain, Michael Bullock, does. Mm. My daughter. It's the athletes that get you to do this. Mm. To see the athletes compete year after year, to do it cost-free, from the funds that we're able to raise as a team, that's what gets me every year to come back and do this event. That's really awesome. I'll say one more thing to that. It's uh, the quality of the people that are doing the volunteering, police, fire, corrections, prosecutors, they all get it. Like they get the program and, and there's a bond, there's a camaraderie. You spend 24 hours sleep deprived in the cold and you become close to people. You can't help mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So. Timmy, welcome to the Super Plunge team. What made you decide to participate in the Super Plunge? Oh, thank you. Uh, they've been asking me for a long time. Um, I'll be honest with you, I hate going in the cold water. I really don't go in the uh, ocean in the this summer. This is going to be right up your alley then. Because <laughs> yeah. I get cold. But for the athletes, um, it's time for me to come out of my comfort zone and you know go in 24 times and step up. We know we need a lot of funds for Special Olympics with the unified sports and games. You know, it's, uh, it's more programs and it's important. So um, I have to do it. <laughs> it's, it's necessary. Um, I'm going to struggle. I'm a little nervous, but uh, I got these guys and we're what a we team. at least. She, she has a shy appearance more. about her, but she's <laughs> very tough. Like, she's a great runner and very resilient and goal oriented. She'll do great. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. You're going to. I don't think it's something you're going to love, but it's something <laughs> you're going to do successfully. Just think, you do, just think of doing the one plunge 24 times. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what that's I'm scared about. Yeah. yeah. But I know like you do, when you go out and play your sport, you put your game face on, you just yeah. do it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm sure it's going to be different than running a marathon, but um, I'm ready, I think. <laughs> and this is the 50th anniversary of Special Olympics Rhode Island this year, so Perfect right. time to yep. do it. it's going to be awesome. Hopefully it's 50 degrees for the 50th anniversary. Not like last year. Last year we ran into sub-zero temperatures overnight. It was brutal. No one. It's okay. And Ellen, how many people are participating in the Super Plunge this year? Once again, it's grown. So the people that we have participating from the state of Rhode Island has grown to 12 from 10, uh, maybe as much as 15. We have some people that are exploring the idea. And uh, we could have 15 Super Plungers from Rhode Island and another five from New England. New England uh, police departments want to come back and, and revisit our, our Super Plunge. 
So it's great. It's a camaraderie building thing. It's, it's spreading awareness about Special Olympics. As Rick and I say, it's a living, breathing event, and it takes off on social media, and it gets people talking, because it is, it's a painful, shocking thing to do, and, and to do in the middle of winter, in water when it's, it's at its coldest temperatures. So it draws people's attention, and then it's like, why? The why is Special Olympics. And Rick, what, what is the most challenging part of the Super Plunge? When the sun goes down. There's no doubt about it. Once the sun goes down, getting up for that midnight, one, two, three, four o'clock plunge, it, it hurts. It's brutal. You're sleep deprived. You're lethargic. But once, once you get past that hurdle and Mother Nature shows her sun come up out of the horizon, you get rejuvenated, you catch a, a second life, mm. and from that point on, you're like, there's, there's that light at the end of that finish line. So once you get through the midnight pot, you're good to go. You're good it's to like go. mental warmth. You see the sun come up on the horizon, and it's just as cold as it was 20 minutes earlier, and you can still see ice in the water, but y you feel warm, and it's like, all right, second win. This is all downhill. We can do this now. It's a motivating thing. Definitely. Tammy, if someone is interested in sponsoring the Super Plungers, how can they do it? Well, with all different uh, Super Plungers, they all have like their own page that they have their links through either email or uh, on the internet. For myself, um, if they want to make a personal donation, they can come right to the East Providence Police Department um, and we'll take donations uh, right there. The secretaries will take in a donation, write it out to Special Olympics Rhode Island. I also have my own link online through social media. Um, we have a Super plunge we have a page, page. Yep. firstgiving.com. Uh, First giving that we uh, you can find any of us. It doesn't it doesn't matter who you donate. It all goes to the same place. It all goes to the athletes. Uh, the amounts that the super plungers raise is is just to challenge each other and make it higher. And that's awesome that the people who are donating really know where the money is going because sometimes you donate to certain things and you're not sure if it's actually going where it's supposed right. to go or if it's going to are the things you never know. So it's good to know that the money is going right to that. That's really, really awesome. And for me, like, uh, you know, I work in East Providence uh, at the police department. The captain of the team is from East Providence. We have another officer from East Providence. So we're going to be, you know, going to some of the local businesses, and they know that some of that money is going back to their own athletes uh, yeah. that live in East Providence, or Special Olympic athletes. There are hundreds of people that go to the beach that weekend to watch either one plunge or several plunges. So there's a lot of opportunity for businesses to get name recognition to get behind an event like this. And there's some uh, sponsorship levels that offer all types of incentives. Name recognition is the big one. Banners on the beach for the entire weekend, basically from early Saturday morning until Sunday afternoon. And now, can you tell me again where and when the Super Pond will be? Sure. So it's Salty Brine Beach, which is down there where the ferries leave for Block Island in Narragansett, right near George's. And I got to say, George's has been a fantastic supporter of this plunge over the last few years. Um, it's nice to have a heated, warm indoor uh, space after you get done with this 24 hour cold experience. Uh, you know, bathroom facilities, things like that. And the food's excellent. The atmosphere mm -hmm. of the day of the torture and plunge, when we finish our 24 hour cycle of plunges, the atmosphere is electric. It's euphoric to see people like yourself, the people that we're supporting come out and the elation on your face and that's, that spirit of team it is fantastic. And then it's just, after that I'm on fumes anyways, but we go into George's and it's a celebration. Definitely. And anyone is welcome to come down whether you want to stay for an hour or you want to stay for a minute. Highly recommend that you get involved. And this is a perfect opportunity to meet athletes, families, and volunteers. And if, and if, if they want to come down any time after midnight, it's perfectly fine because one of the important things that we need, it, it sounds silly, but we come out of the water after when it's dark and cold, someone there t to hand us our towel. Yeah. It sounds, it, it sounds silly. But it, it means it the truly, water is usually truly the, means a lot. In the 35, 36 degree range, it's right near freezing. And then the air temperatures last year were actually colder than the water. It was at zero and minus with a, with a wind chill. So when you come out of the water wet and you get hit by a sub-zero wind chill, you can't get to a towel fast enough. And for whatever reason, 
every year the tide goes out towards Block Island. So the darker and later it gets, the further you have to go out into the ocean to get into water deep enough, and now you're coming back in the pitch black dark and just begging for a towel. Yeah. So we have a lot of supporters that actually stand on the, on the water's edge for yeah. us. So it's March 24th to 25th, Saturday, Sunday of 2018. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, thanks for having thanks us. Having us. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. Let me win. But if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Hi, welcome back to Special Olympics Morning Magazine. Hi, my name is Mary Irons, and joining me today is Dante Jesus, CEO of Special Olympics Long Island. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Mary. How about you? I'm doing good. Good. Can you share with me the highlights of 2017? Wow, what a year. You know, started out on January 1st, 2017, down at Roger Wheeler State Beach, the Penguin Plunge. That started us off and running for a great, very successful year in 2017. And before I go any further, I just want to thank coaches, volunteers, staff, uh, and of course the greatest athletes in the world, the athletes of Special Olympics Rhode Island, for an amazing year. Uh, and I'm proud to be CEO of this organization because everyone works together to make sure our athletes have a quality uh, athletic uh, menu for them to participate in. But 2017, I think the highlight on uh, November 22nd when, when Tim Shriver uh, made a visit to Rhode Island. Yeah, it was and uh, Yeah, made a visit to Ponagansett High School. Ponagansett was awarded a unified champion school banner for meeting great criteria when it comes to an all-inclusive school. So a shout out to uh, Ponagansett. But when Tim came, um, you know, he shared with me his vision for what the next 50 years will bring. You know, we're in the 50th anniversary. Yeah. SORI turns 50 this year in 2018. So 2017 was, was a great year. Whenever I think of uh, my favorite moments, uh, whenever I look at a, um, a victory stand and I see athletes getting medals, I, I think that's always been the highlight for me. Um, Second highlight is just watching the parade of athletes at summer games and watching 1,500 athletes march proudly into URI at Mead Stadium. So 2017 was, was a great year. It was a great year for our athletes. It was a great year for the organization uh, in, in, in total. Uh, but now it's 2018 and we're looking to celebrate an anniversary. What are your goals for 2018? 2018, you know, we, start, we look back to 1968 when Eunice Kennedy Shriver founded Special Olympics and opened up the games in Chicago on July 20th, 1968. And that was the beginning of, of Special Olympics internationally. It was mm -hmm. the beginning, also coincided with the anniversary of, of Special Olympics Rhode Island as well. So we're both celebrating our 50th. Not only Special Olympics Rhode Island, but Special Olympics International. Our goals, we have three events that we're hosting uh, to commemorate the 50th, and that is on uh, opening night of, of summer games instead of being on the football field. This year we're going indoors. We're going to the Ryan Center, and um, everything will be done indoors, and at the end of the evening there'll be a concert uh, cool. by a very famous Rhode Islander, but I can't say his name right now because I'm forbidden to do so, but uh, a concert, and it's all about the athletes. The second event we're going to do is in July. We want to do a unified athlete event, uh, athletic event. So we're going to pick a sport, whether it's softball, volleyball, basketball, golf, and have a unified athletic event in middle of July. 
And then we're going to cap it off in October, October 13th, with the 50th anniversary gala. So it's, it's our intention um, to go down the roads on the Patuxet and put 750 people, maybe 800 people into roads to really celebrate what Special Olympics is all about. And, that, and that's, that's the, the core values of, of acceptance, inclusion, and respect. And, and I think the first 50 years of Special Olympics have been absolutely fantastic. But we're already looking forward to new, uh, the new horizons, so to speak, and what the next 50 years will bring for the athletes of our great uh, organization. Can you share with us how Special Olympics will celebrate the birthday and anniversary here in Rhode Island? Well, you know, I, I mentioned the three events, but, you know, we want to highlight every single month, we, we want to make sure we highlight at our events uh, the fact that we are celebrating our 50th. We're going to have T-shirts for sale. We're going to have polo shirts for sale. We're going to have commemorative coins for sale. So there's a lot that goes into it. And, and I talked about the three events, but I want to just say that we have such a very, very busy menu of events throughout the entire year. We, we want to make sure that we showcase our athletes at all of our events, not just the three that I mentioned. In addition to that, uh, you know, under the direction of Jerry Walter, our director of marketing and communications director, she she's working on uh, a marketing plan to make sure all of Rhode Island knows that we're celebrating yeah. our 50th anniversary. From a fundraising perspective, um, it's really opened up some really good doors for us. We we're, we're out there. We're telling our sponsors, our donors, hey, this is our 50th. Would you like to donate to help support? Um, the concert on June 1st. Would you help support the gala on October 13th? And we've had great success so far. I think we're going to raise in excess of $150,000 uh, to make sure all of those events are successful and that our athletes are showcased the way they should be, athletes first. How can athletes help prepare for these celebrations? I, I'm, I'm dying for athlete input. You know, we have our, our, our leadership council and we go to them often and talk, about, talk to them about events and what they want to see and what they want to do. Um, the voice of our athletes are always very, very important to us. And um, it's a strong voice. And we listen. And we hear what they have to say. And I think um, knowing uh, you know, you know, what, what they want to see at the gala, what do they want to see at, at the opening ceremonies on June 1st down at URI, uh, how can they play a more uh, vital role in supporting the marketing plan? How do we get them out into the public and speak to what Special Olympics means to them? Our greatest spokespeople are our athletes. When they have a story to tell and are able to tell that story, we're successful and the word spreads very, very quick. I want our athletes to come to us and say, this is what we would like to see during the 50th anniversary. If someone wants to be a spot sponsor of the 50th anniversary celebration, who should they call? Dennis the Jesus, that's who they should call, 349-4900. I'm heading up the, um, the sponsorships for the 50th, also the sponsorships for Summer Games. I'm, walk I'm working with a very talented staff. Pat Kirby is assisting me. Jerry Walter is assisting me. Even Chris Hopkins is assisting me, and usually he's the program guy. Yeah. So uh, we're all involved. We realize that with the 50th, it, it gives us an opportunity um, a unique opportunity to raise money, not only for eight, 2018, but down the road as well. So um, when we highlight 2018 and we highlight our athletes and we highlight the work that we do, our sponsors are going to respond to that and make generous contributions to make sure that 2018 is spectacular. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. We'll be right back right after these messages. But if I cannot win, let me be brave the attack.
Welcome back to Special Australian Magazine. We're at the 42nd Annual Penguin Plunge here at San Jose State Beach. And with me, what is your name? Brian Kwiatkowski. Megan Brown. And you guys are Penguin Excelsior. Can you tell us how you become a Penguin Excelsior? Uh, I, was, I was asked by the Rhode Island Special Olympics. I've been raising money for the Special Olympics for about seven years now. And... Um, I received a phone call from Tracy Garabedian in May and asked me to be an Excelsior. I wasn't sure what that meant, but I showed up at the meeting and found out that we were going to be part of the planning committee for the event, and we've had nothing but fun. And how long have you been in Excelsior? This is my first year, and my dad's fire department um, actually nominated me because I'm one of, we've done it for 17 years, and I'm one of the plungers who have done it for 17 years, so they picked me to represent the fire department. And what does a, a, a Penguin Excelsior curtail during the year in fundraising? How do, do you guys start after this is over to fundraise for next year? So I'm certainly going to stay involved with the with the Special Olympics. Um, I mean, this has been a, a positive experience for me. I'm part of a Freemason Lodge. I've got 109 guys that are joining us today. So we'll, we'll start, we're already starting to plan our fundraising efforts for next year. And, um, how you uh, will you stay involved? Absolutely. As long as the fire department stays involved, I'll stay involved. And this being the 50th anniversary special, what do you say to others who haven't done the plunge? What do you say to them to come down here today? I'd say it's a great bucket list item. This is a fantastic event. Um, it's a it's it's everybody has fun. It raises a lot of money for a fantastic charity, and anybody who's thinking of trying it, I think they should do it. Again, just like as Brian said, it raises a lot of money for an amazing charity. And YOLO, you only live once. So even <laughs> if you do it one time and raise some money, it's worth the experience. On the 50th anniversary Special Olympics, we thank you. And we hope we see you again next year here at the Special Olympics Program Penguin Plunge. Thank you. Thank you. Five, eight, seven, six. Welcome back to Special Olympics Rhode Island Magazine. Hi, I'm Mary Ellen Powers. Joining me now from Central Falls High School is Unified Champion Schools coach Manny Silva and athlete Jovan Varela. Welcome to the show. Thank nice you. Nice to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. How long have you both been involved with Unified Champion Schools? Well, I've been coaching for about six years now at Central Falls High School in Unified Sports. I've been in Unified Sports for three years. Uh, and what sports do you have? Volleyball and basketball. Nice. What's your favorite? Basketball. Nice. Why is inclusion important to both of you? Teamwork that we have and communication. To me, it's just, it's just a great thing to bring everybody together, seeing everybody smile and enjoying their time. Nice. What does it mean to you that Central Falls High School was recognized as a National Banner Unified Champion School? I think it's a good thing that we've been recognized because Central Falls is a good school to be in. Good. 
it meant to me I was I was lost of words. That's what it meant. It was it was yeah. it was very special at the moment when I first got the information on it and then um I felt more happy for our partners and athletes, our partners that help our athletes on the court. So it was very it was a very special moment. Nice. Now, um, as a coach, like, what is it like seeing the interaction between the athletes and the partners? Heart melting. It's, it's like the sweetest thing. We're a very small community, and our kids, our students, our partners are very, 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 very helpful when it comes to helping one another. Nice. Now, how about for you, um, you know, as an athlete, what is it like having friendships with people without disabilities, doing it's sports a, together? It's a great th thing to have. The guy could make new friends and the teams that I'm in, that I'm in, in. Yep. Good. How did your school celebrate this honor? We had a big presentation in the gym where everybody went there and they clapped for us and say nice job and yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so we came together. We had a school prep rally for all the students in the, in the gymnasium. We invited a few special friends from the community in the city. Special Olympics directors and staff came. So it was it was a special moment in the in the gym. Nice. I can only imagine what that must have been like. It was crowded. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of noise. Nice. What is your favorite part about the Unified Champion Schools program at Central Falls? My favorite part is that in Central Falls, like being small, everyone stays together no matter what it is, sport, everyone comes along and is there to help one another. Like our city is very, very small and when it comes to like involvement, it is a lot of it. It's very, it's very, to me, I've been involved with the community so long, like coaching wide, coaching youth sports, I coach in the high school. I do so much coaching, but it's like, once I got involved with Unified, it's like the main to me. Like, I can't wait to like Unified restarts whenever the sport, because I do both volleyball and basketball in Central Falls now, so it's special, it's special. Good. What is your favorite part? The people that we have in the team. We have nice people that help us during our problems, so. And the sport that we play is fun to play, and yeah. Good. What advice would you both give to students or even adults that want to get involved with Unified Champion Schools? My advice, um, it just don't hesitate. It's, it's an awesome thing. It brings everybody together, it become a big family, especially like the partners get to interact with the athletes, the athletes get to interact with the partners, and at the end of the day, like, as long as all of them are enjoying their time and see that the, every student is really doing their best, I'm, I'm happy to see that. Good. What advice would you give? For, student, for kids, just join the teams and have fun. For adults, same. Good. And the friendship is very important too, right? Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you both very much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for nice having us. Nice to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Be sure to tune in next month for another great edition of Special Olympics for Dial Magazine.